Hey guys, it's Ashley with 7CI, AKA 700 Club Interactive. Hey, if you've ever questioned the authority of Christ or you believe in new ageism, uh, I want you to watch this video because I think it's gonna change your mind and really show you the truth about who Jesus is. Watch all the way until the end. I believed that I was God and that we could all become Christ too, if only we realized this inherent connection we have to, to God. At 19 years old, New Age blogger Steve Bancars was a spiritual guru to hundreds of thousands of followers. For Steve, it had spiritual and financial benefits. I was getting 200,000 to 300,000 views on it a day, and the income to me was an affirmation from God. I believe God was rewarding me with helping wake people up into a higher state of consciousness. It gave me a sense of power, a sense of purpose, and a sense of meaning and value, perhaps. Steve grew up in a Christian home, but as a teenager, developed a fascination for aliens, the paranormal, and psychic phenomenon. That led him to question his parents' Christian beliefs and eventually led to a full-blown obsession with New Age theology. The first thing that really got me doubting the biblical worldview was uh, ufology. All of these UFO sightings, um, evidence from the ancient world that we might have been visited, and there was enough evidence to make me consider that maybe the universe is filled with intelligent biological life that was perhaps naturally evolved. If you piece together the alleged evidence for reincarnation and the alleged evidence for um, you know ancient astronaut theory, you get um, you get New Age theology. Jesus remained part of Steve's worldview. I didn't really reject him, but I didn't accept him for who he truly was. I created an idol out of Jesus to suit my own preferences, to suit myself, and to suit my sin. This Jesus was politically correct. He was a universalist. I wanted to be my own guide, and I didn't want to have to play by somebody else's rules. As Steve began blogging about New Age practices and supernatural phenomena, he came to enjoy his prominence and the money and vices that came with it. But it was never enough. I was a lust addict for 10 years or so. I was a really broken person. I didn't realize how broken that I, I truly was, but I was depraved. I was miserable. I had depression and anxiety that I was suppressing. I had all of this quote unquote spiritual knowledge all of this information and it wasn't bearing any real fruit in my life. I felt like something was missing. I felt a little bit dead inside. Steve had a disturbing dream. When I opened my eyes, I was hovering four feet over my bed and realized that I was out of my body and I started having a panic attack and a being appeared in front of me and this being had red skin with black markings on his face. It just scared me because I realized that I wasn't in control, that this stuff is more powerful than I was, that these forces were real, and that they didn't care for my well-being. They didn't need my permission. I was in their playground. Shaken by the experience, he began investigating the claims of the Bible and Jesus more closely. I would sleep with the Bible under my pillow because I knew there was something there that was authoritative, that was true, and that was secure, and that had power over anything that I was scared of. In his search for answers, Steve was drawn to stories in books and online of people who had encounters with Christ. I would watch another near-death experience where someone would go to hell. Jesus would rescue them out of hell, and they'd come back, and the fruit of their lives, they would be totally transformed, and I'd feel moved and touched. And I'd think to myself, okay, there's something real to Jesus the Jesus of the Bible. Steve finally accepted one of his mother's many invitations to go with her to church. At the end of the service, he prayed and asked Jesus into his life, but it was more of a mental exercise than an act of faith. I just decided in my head intellectually that I was going to soften up to him, but I still held all the same New Age beliefs. I still believed in everything that I believed in my sin life. I wanted a little bit more of him, but I guess I still didn't want all of him. After a few days, Steve realized he couldn't ignore the truth any longer. I reached a point in my life where the brokenness was weighing on me so much that I, I needed to stop playing games with my life. I needed to stop playing games with God. 
and stop playing games with Jesus. And I just decided to go outside and to just fall on my face before Jesus and just weep. I was just weeping like a baby. I was submitting. I was repenting. I was tired. I was sorry. I was broken. And I couldn't do this alone anymore. And I was crying out for, for him. I wanted him. In that moment, Steve had an experience with Christ of his own. I could feel that he was Lord over me and he was Lord over all creation. I could feel that he was concerned for me, but I could feel that he was king. I knew that he was king over creation, that the whole universe was under his feet and the wind was just totally infused with his presence. And the thing that stuck out for me that made me realize that I was dealing with, with God was how the wind and the trees, this, the sounds outside the birds, the crickets, they sounded like they were glorifying him. Like he was, he was there with me and they were acknowledging that somehow. Like, creation recognized him. Steve burned all of his New Age books and made a public statement to his online followers. I told people within a few days of that experience, I'm sorry for misleading all of you astray. This stuff is not of God. They're tools of demons to deceive us and lead us away from Jesus. And Jesus is the Son of God and he's exactly who he claimed to be. Steve endured waves of ridicule and personal attacks from the online community, but that hasn't stopped him from trying to teach those who persecuted him. His website, reasonsforjesus.com, provides evidence and sound reasoning that prove the claims of the Bible and the only path to truth, forgiveness, and joy in life come through Jesus Christ. He delivered me from the stronghold of New Ageism and of occult philosophy. I'm the happiest I've ever been in my life. I feel more whole than I've ever been in my life. If there's hope for me, there's hope for anybody. I was the most lost person that I knew, and the Lord drew me to himself and had mercy on me. We come to the Lord. He forgives us. He gives us his spirit, and he wants to help us heal and restore us and walk us through these traumas and these pains. And he wants to accept us and welcome us as a son into relationship with him, not into dry religious rule keeping, but into a supernatural intimate relationship with Jesus Christ and his presence. I love that story. And I'm so thankful that Stephen shared his testimony with us. And I don't know where you're at in your faith. I don't know if you're like where Stephen was and um, you believe in very new age beliefs and you believe that you're in control of not only yourself, but the spirit world and you have, you roll and you can tap into that. And you believe in a cosmic force versus a personal God who knows your name and knows every hair on your head. I don't know where you're at, but I encourage you to give God a chance. Don't just say yes with your head, just like Stephen did. It took him a little bit to say yes, not only with his head, but his heart. That's what God is after. He's after our hearts. He's after us. He just wants you to know of his goodness because he wants to pour out his lavish love on you and your life. And I love what Stephen talks about in his testimony is, you know, when he had that really frightening encounter with the enemy, the Satan, I mean, demonic forces, um, he began to sleep with the Bible under his pillow. Why? Because he knew deep down the authority, the authority that was in that Bible, the authority that's in the word of God, the authority that lies in the name of Jesus. And he knew deep down that there was some truth to it. And, you know, then the story continues. He goes to church and um, gives his life to the Lord, first with his head, then his heart. And he just had that awesome encounter where he realized everything every little thing, the birds chirping, the wind blowing, his life was designed with a purpose by a personal creator, not a cosmic force, 
a personal creator who knows you intimately and just wants you to know him intimately. There's a scripture in Proverbs, uh, Proverbs 9, and it says, the beginning of wisdom, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom and knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. So if you're looking for wisdom, if you're looking for understanding, the first step to take is giving your life to Jesus Christ. So give God everything, every part of your life, even the parts that you're not even sure about, the parts that are just broken, because that is what our God does. He's a redeeming God, and I don't know what you've been through, but God wants to bring it all together, to make something beautiful out of your life, because that's who he is. He loves you so much. So pray with me today, right now. Let's pray for you to accept Jesus into your life. Father God, just pray along with me. Father God, Jesus Christ, say his name out loud. Jesus, I acknowledge you. I acknowledge who you are. You are Messiah. You are the savior of the world. You are king, the king of kings, Lord of lords. I believe that God sent you down on this earth to walk this earth, ultimately to die on the cross for my sins. And I believe that you resurrected three days later so that the resurrection power of your life can now be mine and I can be in right standing with God the Father and I can have a relationship with God the Father, with you, Jesus, and with your Holy Spirit. And I receive your Holy Spirit right now. I receive it, God, because I acknowledge Jesus is my Savior. I repent of my sins. I renounce any beliefs, any new age beliefs, any anything that does not that is not obedient to the word of God. And I renounce that and I accept Jesus as my Lord, my personal Lord and Savior. From this moment forward, I declare that you are Lord of my life and King of my heart. I believe that everything falls under your name. You have authority over my life, Jesus, nothing else. And I just cancel any assignment from the enemy from the enemy to derail me from the purpose that you've given me and the destiny that you have over my life. Lord, continue to transform my life from this moment forward. Transform my life. Heal me, God. Heal me of the wounds that I've just been left open and festering in my life, God. I pray for your peace to come over me. I pray for your peace to infiltrate my soul and my spirit and my mind. I give you everything, God. I give you all. I surrender all and I lay down my life just as you laid down your life for me. I pray this all in your name, Jesus. Amen and amen. I just want to pray for you, friend. So please just let me pray for you. Father, I just pray for my friend who just gave their life to you. And again, I cancel, in the name of Jesus, I cancel every assignment from the enemy that has a purpose to derail them from the calling that you have on their life, God. And I just, I just rebuke the enemy in Jesus' name. I rebuke any demonic force over their life that they've somehow given legal ground to. No, we proclaim the name of Jesus over their lives. And I just proclaim the blood of Jesus and apply the blood of Jesus to their lives, Lord, for protection, Lord, protection, Father. And Lord, I just pray that the fruit of their lives from this moment forward shows and is so evident that you are real. And Lord, I, I just pray that they begin to declare and proclaim the name of Jesus to their friends and that they're bold in their faith, God. They're fearless in proclaiming the truth of Jesus Christ to those around them. I thank you for them, Lord, and I just pray for protection over them. I pray for the peace of God to fall on them like a blanket, and I thank you for what you're going to do in their lives. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Friend, I am so happy for you. Um, literally, this, this is 
This is such an awesome thing, awesome, awesome thing. And we have so many great resources for you available online at cdn.com. Um, you can also give us a call at 1-800-700-7000 and just say that you prayed uh, and you gave your life to Jesus. Um, you watched a video with some girl on YouTube and they'll give you, they'll send you a free packet called A New Day that's just gonna help you in this new faith journey. Uh, but if you don't wanna do that, that's okay. There's a link down below um, that you can click and there's a whole bunch of topics and different articles on on basically anything you need to know regarding your faith in Jesus. So um, I just encourage you to do that and take advantage of those free resources um, I'm, I'm happy for you and uh, I'm excited for this new journey. Thanks for watching and God bless you guys.